All right, guys. Uh, big test here. We just rolled it outside in case it uh, kind of backfired. There's a lot of fumes in the garage. Did spill a little gas. So, clutch in. Let's see. Okay, guys. So. As you can see, our oil pressure sensor is pegged at 80. Um, we're gonna go ahead and show you how to fix that today, so let's get into it. All right guys, welcome back to Garage Toys. I know it's been a while, but today we're gonna be changing the oil pressure sending unit on the car. Um, this should work for most LS models on this Corvette. Um, so here, I'll give you a little close up of the part we're gonna change today. Um, it's a little hard to get to, but we'll show you how to do it. So here's a little parts list, what you're gonna need. Need a couple old rags because we are going to be working with the fuel, so you might spill a little. Um, you're going to want a three-inch drive, three-eighths inch drive ratchet with a swivel universal, a 10 mil deep well socket, and an extension. I'm not really sure how long this one is, but you're going to want an extension on your socket. Some safety glasses because we are working with high pressure. Um, you're going to need an oil pressure switch socket. I had to go run to the store and get this. Um, for this one, you can see on the back, it works on 1991 and newer Chevy, GMC, Hummer, all those Pontiac um, engines. So you're going to need this. This is basically just to help us get into this engine bay a little easier and it fits this a little bit better. Why can't you use the regular socket? Um, it's a little bit bigger and we can't fit it. Oh, I'll put a picture in, but you can see it's a lot thinner. It's a thin walled socket. So this should fit right onto your 3 8 inch drive and you should be able to pop it right off the old one. Um, so then we're going to need a AC slash um, fuel line removal kit. So we'll pop the two lines off on the fuel rails. Uh, so also, I had to go get this, so don't forget that. I don't know if you guys want this, but here's the box that the oil pressure sensor came in for the part numbers. Uh, take a look at that, pause the video if you need to. And then all in all, this project cost me about 40 bucks, which is actually pretty good comparing if I were to give this to somebody to go have them do it. This might be different for you, but a um, little side note, I ordered this part off of Amazon because I just didn't have it at my local parts store. So I ordered this online, came in in about a week, which was fine by me. And then I had to go to the store and get these special tools. Um, so with that, we're gonna get right into it. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is take these covers off. There's two of them, one on each side. And they pop off real easy. We just did them off camera by accident. Um, as you can see, it's just a little, it's two hangers here and three clips there. Pops off super easy and should go on pretty easy again. All right, so you wanna grab your removal kit. Uh, it's gonna be this blue one here. Should be a 3 8 if you don't have the color coded one. Uh, so you're gonna... Okay, so what you wanna do is push this little wiring harness up. And then once you feel it click, you push this in here. You gotta get more of that, get more of that in there. So push that up. And then pull that off. And we didn't have a whole lot of fuel come out of here, but you still want to keep this tucked Good away. Good job. So you're going to pull your clip off and do the other one. All right, so once you have this one off, you're going to take your second rag. You want to tuck it, tuck it under here. And uh, same thing, fan it out as much as you can. We didn't have a whole lot of fuel come out of that one, so hopefully not on this one too. So once you have that on here, again, you're going to take your blue one, pull this wiring harness away. Yeah, and it helps if you have somebody else just grab that. So once you have this seated, you're going to want to make sure all your wires are out of the way. So you can see that.
doesn't want to go. No, doesn't. Don't force it. Because the other one came off nice and easy. Push with your finger on the inside, on the inside on diameter. On this yep. diameter. Doesn't want to come Tell off. With the old man in there. He tried. So once your fuel lines are off, you're going to take this clip off here, um, put it back on your little rack here, and now we can actually start taking the fuel clips off, these little injector clips. So how we have eight injector clips? We, yeah, you will have eight injector clips on your LS. Um, and then you got four bolts. And four, four nuts. 10 millimeter nuts on these rails. So you have two here and two there and then you should be able to shift this forward so you can reach here show them that so you should reach in this little corner right here but it should open up a lot more once we take this fuel rail off and you have to take this one off too because it's connected right here so yeah let's get into it Now that you have your four clips off, your fuel injector clips, um, you're going to want to start taking the fuel rails off with the 10 millimeter deep wall socket. Um, it's to be noted that on this back driver's side corner, this very one and tuck behind this little thing here, um, it's directly, it directly puts down into the fuel rail here. So you can't actually take it off until you unbolt this. 
So just make sure not to pull on it too hard to break it. Just recognize that it's bolted on there. So do that before you take it. Okay, so we got the uh, fuel rail off. Um, came off pretty straightforward. Just gotta come up with it and watch out. There are some little plastic clips that connect to this wiring harness right here. That will prevent you from moving this way. So you can come up with it. Yeah, you see this one here and then there's one over there and then one there. And I think that that was it, right? Yeah, just the three. Two. So, and now we're just gonna be moving this bracket right here that seems to be in our way of getting into this little corner for the sensor. So yeah. So we are taking this bracket off. It does look like it serves two purposes to hold this intake manifold on and to push this wiring harness back, but it just needs to come off or else we cannot get back there because it comes up with a little lip like this. So that's just got to come off. These are long. That might be the bolt for the intake. Um, intake. Yeah. Probably. Well, it's used for that bracket too, so we'll tighten it back up in a minute. It's got to come off. We can't get to that oil. Sending unit. Listen, you can't get off like that. Take a, an adjustable. Yep. Don't force it because you're going to put a, a weird torque through it. Yeah. And yeah. break the break the hole. So we got the fuel rail off, and we ran into a little bit of a problem. We couldn't really fit a hand in there because of this stupid little bracket right here. Um, I guess on this year before that, uh, this bracket's in the way. So we can't and it's designed in such a way that you can't take it off unless you take the intake off. Yeah, which is which is idiotic. It, it's so stupid. So we came up with an idea to wrap a cable or just wrap a little piece of wire around here. And we got it around the clip so we were able to just pull it up. And we use this camera we had here with the kid force going to so see what we were doing. And that's pointed right on that's the, the sensor. The three problems. So we can see what we're doing. Exactly. So that now, helps helps a lot. It's um, a great investment. Yeah. <laughs> Especially for little things where you can't even fit your hand back there. So we got the cap so we got the cap off. So we got the cap off. So now we're gonna slide the We're gonna slide our socket in here. You got this it's over here. Right here. So we're gonna slide our socket in here. We got two extensions on here, two or three eighths swivel onto our special thin walled one and one sixteenths inch socket. We'll see how it goes. And we'll see, we'll let you know. All right, let me get that light. Guys, do not attempt this project. If you're not a little bit creative, uh, we did at one point have to take this, this little wire off, a uh, little speaker wire or something, and we looped it like a little lasso around the old sensor, and we slid it underneath the uh, little clip, and then we pulled it all out. 
very carefully. And there's we no were, way to reach. There's literally hands. no way to reach it. You can't it. reach it with your hands. We, you can't reach it with a nothing. screwdriver. Like, there's nothing you there's can do to get it off. Like you are helpless. You have to take the intake off. You have to literally take the engine apart to get this little <clears> sensor out. At the very minimum, the very, intake. Yeah, very minimum intake because fuel. This one has <clears throat> that bracket, that black bracket where you can't take that off. So you Which, can't get your hand in there. You physically cannot. We had somebody with even smaller hands than me couldn't get it. So it's just, you need to have a little creativeness when you're doing this project. And if you don't have the patience for it, don't even bother because you'll break more stuff than you're trying to fix. And it's just. And the, the hardest part of the project was not even getting. The fuel rail off or no, anything. No. It was just. The, the yeah. hardest part is actually getting that clip off. Yeah. That's and, took the most And time. actually putting the clip back on. In the right orientation safely like not yeah. breaking yeah. the clip or anything yeah. so getting the socket in and out not too bad right? no no you just had to pull a little thing back yeah the taking socket the fuel okay. rail off and the you gotta be hoses. careful not to yeah <clears throat> when you're turning it with the uh, union you're, you're not going to break yeah the uh the new or the old oil um sensor yeah right not to accidentally clip a wire in half or anything like yeah. hit it with a screwdriver and break a wire because if, if you break the wire from the harness you have to solder yeah. it back and it's all already behind there so yeah it, plan on you plan on four or five hours plan easily. on taking the rest of the day on yeah. this and it's a four or five hour job <clears throat> yeah easily now and we we're have just two people on. yeah we're we're right at the point now where we're just about to put the real rail back on exactly. so it's only going to take another half an hour to probably put everything back together if the, but it took all the time also to get it off. um we had these covers <clears throat> on the car here and we didn't really realize how dirty it was underneath these covers so a little word is you know before you take the fuel rails off and anything just take a little vacuum Vacuum out all the little debris so you don't go into the fuel rail or into the injectors and mess up your injectors. Uh, injector just take ports. Yeah, the injector ports. You don't want to mess anything up. <clears throat> it's just preventative maintenance. Yep. So we're getting there. Yeah, we're almost one, done. One more couple steps. Got to get the uh, intakes done. I'm oh, sorry, the uh, fuel rail put on. Uh, clips on. A couple more bolts. And all then those we'll clips. Yes. Guys, those, those clips. Oh, yeah. You want to show them the clips? Yeah, I'll grab them. These clips right here, we took these off of the injectors. You don't have to take these off. Yeah, we realized you don't actually need to take them off. So we're just going to put them back on while the rail's off just so it's nice and easy. But yeah, we thought we would have to, but no. we, we didn't. So no need to take those yeah, off. Don't need to. So they won't, the injectors won't It won't make a in. difference. Yeah. yeah, they won't stay in like we wanted. Electrical connections and gasoline. What a great combination. Maybe we should give it a second to evaporate everything out before we give it a little crank. We're going to wheel it out. But I'll start it in here. <laughs> a lot of fumes. How are we going to wheel it? Are we going to push it out? Yeah, just let it roll out.
I'm gonna take that out. Yeah. And then my truck. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So all in all, it took about two to you know three hours of constant work to get the old oil pressure sensor out and the new one in. Um, it really helps if you have small hands, especially for this car, because there's a little bracket here. I'm not really sure if the other model years have them, but you cannot get a uh, you can't get your socket back there without kind of unbolting it and then just getting pulling a hose back it was it's a process so you just need with that being said you need to have some patience for this project uh, this isn't really a beginner project you need to have a little bit of know-how um, yeah. it's a big test here we just rolled it outside in case it uh, kind of backfired there's a lot of fumes in the garage did spill a little gas so clutch in let's see Satisfying right there. Good job. All right, as you just saw, we started it up. Uh, we checked it for leaks in the driveway. We just rolled it out because there's some heavy fuel vapors in the engine bay, so we didn't want to mess around with that. So we popped it in neutral, went out, started up as you saw, went good. Checked for any leaks underneath the car, and we used the camera again to look where we just were working. No yeah. oil leaks. Yeah, got right in on got the sensor. Right in it. We looked at Made it. Made sure there wasn't leaking. While it was running, uh, we just checked it again. Again, nothing. Nothing no leaks. the injectors. The gauge is reading as it should, around 37 to 40 PSI, just idle. Which is awesome. Which is great. Hmm. Um, and yeah, all so throughout. On to the next one. Next, uh, yeah, I think. Next is the What's seats. your next project? Next is the seats for the car. I just, I have the, them over the there. The rocking, the old. Uh, yeah, the shifting seats. So I have the washers in a box over there. I'm probably going to tackle that in the next video. That's so a, a bad problem with the uh, C5s. The, yeah. The rocking seats. Everybody has seats. that in theirs. So stay tuned for that one. Yeah, stay tuned for that one, guys, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Please subscribe if you like our videos. Yeah, please subscribe. Um, it takes a lot of work to do these videos and really help us out. Hey, fellow YouTubers, check out GarageToysLLC.com, where you can see our full selection of custom shift knobs for any make and model car. We offer many different materials and colors to fit everyone's needs. All of our shift knobs are manufactured here in the USA by fellow auto enthusiasts just like you and can be shipped all over the world. Thanks for visiting.